heard, and I'm certain that you're big fans, Natalie Merchant and John Lombardo. Uh, we'll be talking with them after this word from Panasonic. In the studio, John Lombardo and Natalie Merchant from a group called uh, 10,000 Maniacs. And uh, we'll get into really what I think your music is all about a little bit later on and how different it is from the sound of your name. But a lot of people will ask you from here on out, how did you come up with 10,000 Maniacs? You first, Natalie. I'm just sure. speak. The name really doesn't fit us, and it never actually did. But it was a way to, different, to separate ourselves from a lot of the local bands from where we, we live, which is a very isolated area where people would like to imitate bands like Dawkins. Aha. Which the, you're, and your town is Jamestown, New York, upstate New York. Perhaps you could describe the uh, musical scene up there for us, John. Well, the musical scene is, is kind of diverse for a small town. There's actually a pretty good tradition of uh, country music and bluegrass bands and some, some pickers that are really pretty good. Yeah, that um, was just referring to bands that perform in the clubs. Yeah, in the clubs it's a lot of sort of heavy metal cover bands and Top 40 and um, it's kind of strange. They, there's groups that even imitate other bands. There's like a group that does completely ZZ Top material and there's like a Bruce Springsteen band and there's Doors band. There's a Blue Oyster Cult band, I think, that wanders around the state of New York too. So a, a, a weird environment for you to be trying to get your music heard. That's why we had to leave and begin touring. And you left Jamestown and went where then? First to Atlanta. We went there and lived for three months, I think. Yeah. More or less realizing that we couldn't really relocate anywhere without money, so we've pretty much continually traveled and really just lived out of uh, two vans. And, uh, we used to carry a tent. A yeah. tent? Yeah. And, and you went to all the KOAs around the U.S.? <laughs> the um, camp spots? Yeah, practically. <laughs> practically. The comparisons between you and groups like REM and Fair Fairport Convention are, are uh, pretty numerous. Uh, maybe not so strange since the producer, uh, by the name of Joe Boyd, uh, worked with both of these groups mm -hmm. and worked with you. Did you choose him or did uh, he choose you? Well, actually both. We met him actually before we even had much, uh, much record label interest. And he was very nice right off the bat and very supportive. And, Obviously, because we were so interested in the kind of music that, that he's been associated with, it was really flattering, you know, to find out that he liked us and, and was willing to work with us. So when we finally did sign our deal, he was our choice as producer. And, um, you know, after a bunch of haranguing, you know, they went along with it. We were glad about that. I'm glad you harangued him. Uh, your video that we see here is called Scorpio Rising, and we're going to get to it after this video from An Emotion called Obsession, and then we'll talk more about this video. There you have a music from a band called 10,000 Maniacs and a refreshingly simple video in my, uh, in my book anyway from all of the other frenetic videos that go down around here. Scorpio Rising is from your album called The Wishing Chair. We have John Lobardo uh, and uh, Natalie Merchant with us. Um, the video is perhaps, it is a very simple video. What did you have in mind when you, when you got into doing this thing? We simply wanted to do a live video. Actually, we didn't want to do a video at all, but... We thought a live video would, would be most fitting. What, what was it that made you not want to do a video? Well, we I've always thought that when a band attempts to illustrate a song through some kind of storyline video, that it spoils the imagery that I had already conjured in my mind. So that's why I was always put off by the idea. I thought it was just it was a completely different form of art. I considered my song a piece of art, and I thought if we made a video, it would make it a commercial for a, a product or song. So hence the simplicity of the video. Right. I just wanted to show what we look like when we play. Uh -huh. After you got a recording contract, I guess it was back in 1984, a couple of years back, mm -hmm. what was different? If, if things were different, how were they different? And then what did you think would happen to you in a couple of years? Um, that's a real complicated question, and obviously it we could talk a long time. <laughs> 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 One. But, um, you know, it's not as... Uh, it's nice. It's wonderful, and I'm not putting it down. Why but it hasn't, it hasn't changed our uh, financial picture as yet too much. Not that that's important to us, but but I think we envisioned that it would be a little bit more comfortable at this point. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I guess I was looking for uh, what you just said there, but also when you get you, you struggle for a couple of years, you play all the clubs, you, you wander the U.S., you want your music to be heard by people, and all of a sudden someone says, Here, here's a little advance money, which I understand you did not spend uh, frivolously. 
uh, and ten bucks a day or something like that. And uh, you know, I, I can't imagine you being the type of band that would want to be stars anyway. Mm -hmm. What would happen if you your music was commercially accepted? Like, in this, I would like, be the shocked. top of the charts. I would be very shocked. It may happen. You better prepare yourself. Okay. Uh, well, future touring plans and uh, also album plans as well. Yeah, we're actually winding down almost uh, After these two six or seven months weekend. of touring. Yeah, and then we're we're really getting into uh, rehearsals and, and we're trying to uh, get into the pre-production for the new record and we're hoping to uh, get in the studio in September. Maybe an end of the year. For a Christmas release, huh? Well, just after Christmas. It's hard to compete with all the greatest hits packages <laughs> that come out. <laughs> well, the gift of music could be an album from 10,000 Maniacs for Grandma. So, mm -hmm. Good luck, Natalie and John. Thanks for stopping by and uh, keep us up with your plans. Now, if you'd like to stick around, we've got music from the Jets, from Bob Seger, from Michael McDonald, probably some of your favorite Sounds music. Sounds wonderful. Okay, within 20 minutes. Yeah. And there's some good donuts over there, too. <laughs>